If you would like to reduce your sugar cravings and prevent diabetes, you clicked on the right video. Hi, I'm Dr. Corey Stern and welcome to my channel, Take Control of Your Health. This is a really serious topic because about 589 million people worldwide have diabetes and that's roughly every one in nine people about 252 additional 252 million additional people have diabetes and don't even know it yet and this number is rapidly growing the rate or the amount the prevalence of diabetes has quadrupled in the past 35 years and it looks like that's continuing to occur so let's briefly discuss what diabetes is most people know it's high blood sugar but why is that so bad? When sugar is circulating through your blood um, more than you should have there, it's either because your pancreas cannot produce enough insulin or the insulin doesn't work properly and your cells cannot use it. Insulin is, we call it the key that opens the door to the cells that allows the sugar to enter the cells and then the cells take that sugar and turn it into energy. But if you don't have enough insulin or your insulin is not working properly, the sugar just stays in your blood circulating around and causing damage to your blood vessels. Sugar is highly inflammatory when it's circulating around your blood and it irritates and causes scarring on the inside lining of the blood vessels. And when that happens, the body in its wisdom will call upon cholesterol, ask cholesterol to come to the area to repair the damage. Cholesterol is like a sticky bandage and it fixes it. But if you continuously have high blood sugar, and you're continuously piling up cholesterol as a bandage, after a while, the cholesterol actually ends up forming placking, which causes clogged arteries and stiffens the arteries. In this scenario, cholesterol is not the bad guy. Sugar is the bad guy. So when your arteries start getting stiffened and inflamed, it will cause damage all over your body. It will cause damage to your heart, increasing your risk of heart attacks and heart disease. It will do damage to your brain, which can actually affect your moods, the hormones that control your moods, and can lead to dementia. It can cause damage to your kidneys, living to leading to kidney failure. And I see this very frequently in um, my patient population of diabetics ha uh, having kidney failure. And that's a, it's a terrible thing to have to live with. It can cause damage to your liver, leading to fatty liver and or um, cirrhosis, which is a death sentence. It can damage the nerves, the little tiny nerves in your eyes, leading to vision problems, and your hands and feet, leading to something called peripheral neuropathy when you have numbness and tingling and loose sensation in your, in your hands and feet. And then, of course, your pancreas is overworking. Uh, your poor pancreas is being demanded upon continuously when you have high blood sugar, trying to produce enough insulin to handle the problem. And then the pancreas can become exhausted and actually stop working, which is one of the reasons why the insulin might not be enough to reduce your blood sugar. High blood sugar also can cause obesity because excess sugar in your blood gets stored as fat. So you actually start producing fat cells. So how do we prevent this from happening? Obviously eating foods high in sugar, any kind of sugar, um, concentrated sugar. So things like candy, cookies, cake, ice cream, <clears throat> soda, even fruit juice. Um, it's just too much sugar all at once. And the pancreas cannot 
handle it adequately. If you do that frequently, you're you're playing with fire. You're leading, you're causing your body to be at great risk for diabetes. The more processed the sugar is, the more dangerous it is. So for example, high fructose corn syrup, which is found in many processed products in the in the United States, um, is extremely toxic, very dangerous. Whereas a less refined sugar, there's something called jaggery, which is very popular in India, some parts of Asia and Africa. I have a lot of Indian patients that use it. It's an unrefined natural sugar made from sugar cane juice or sometimes uh, date palm sap. And because it's unrefined, it actually contains some minerals. So it actually has some nutrient value. However, it's still sugar. So if you have an issue with high blood sugar, you shouldn't be eating it. Um, sugar is sugar. So whether it's brown sugar, raw sugar, coconut sugar, honey, maple syrup, they're all sugar. Some are less refined than others, but they're still all sugar. If you have diabetes already, none of those are good for you. If you're struggling with high blood sugar, you shouldn't be eating those things. And if you want to prevent diabetes, you should be very careful of the quantity that you eat of any type of sugar. Also, sugar feeds malignancies and pathogens. So if you've already been diagnosed with, let's say, cancer, or you're struggling with an immune issue, whether it's a chronic, let's say, autoimmune disease or a chronic infection or an acute infection, in other words, you're sick right now, you will be feeding the bugs in your body and, and making them happy and keeping them around longer. So we don't recommend that you eat sugar if you have cancer or you're sick. So sugar also competes with other nutrients to get into your cells. Uh, if you have a high sugar diet, I guarantee you, you have nutritional deficiencies. Now, carbohydrates are foods that break down into sugar in your body. And yes, you do need them. Okay. I'm not saying that you don't need carbs. So a lot of people say to me, but don't I need sugar? So you just have to understand the difference between carbohydrates, complex carbohydrates that come sugar versus eating sugar that's already sugar, right? Sugar that turns into glucose right away, which is what ends up in your blood versus complex carbohydrates that have to go through a series of changes before they become glucose. It is recommended that when you eat carbohydrates that you eat them along with fats, good quality fats and protein because that will slow down their conversion into sugar. And I have a lot of videos on good fat um, that you can watch to see what our definition of good fat is. So what types of carbohydrates are good to eat? Uh, low sugar fruits like berries, um, breads that are made from sprouted grain rather than flour. Flour is highly concentrated. Small amounts of root vegetables, sweet potato, um, and of course, green vegetables are very low in carbohydrates and they have a lot of nutrients in them. They, they contain a lot of minerals. So I want to talk about a couple of supplements that help both reduce sugar cravings and improve insulin production. So I'm going to do a screen share. And this first one is an herb called gymnema. And gymnema has two really cool features. One, if you are having a lot of sugar cravings and sugar is highly addictive, uh, it's very hard to just stop at cold turkey. If you start taking gymnema, it will reduce your sugar cravings. It actually also inhibits the taste of sugar. So sugar doesn't taste good when you're using gymnema. 
we do recommend that for that particular function that you suck on it. It's a bitter herb. Um, bitter herbs are actually really good for you. And it doesn't taste good. I'm just letting you know that. But it will really help you to stop eating sugar. The other thing that Gymnema does is it helps your pancreas to develop new insulin producing cells. They're called beta cells. And so Gymnema actually helps improve your production of insulin. The other supplement I want to share with you is called Diaplex. And Diaplex is primarily chromium, which is a trace mineral. And chromium helps improve insulin insensitivity. So in other words, insulin resistance. So a lot of diabetics or people that struggle with uh, sugar levels in their blood are chromium deficient. A lot of people are just deficient in many trace minerals. So chromium really helps you to um, metabolize carbohydrates better. It helps support the pancreas, the health of the pancreas, making it and easier for it to produce good quality insulin. The pancreas needs chromium to make insulin. And Diaplex also contains support for, in general, just for pancreatic health, for gallbladder health, which is important for, um, for digesting fat. And pancreas also helps with digesting fat. So it kind of gives the pancreas a little bit of a break. And, um, it also contains nutrients that help your pituitary gland, which is in your brain, which tells your hormones what to do. So this has so many great things in it that can help balance out your body and improve your ability to handle sugar. It's one of the nicknames for chromium is glucose tolerance factor. So the uh, links to those supplements will be in the description of this video. And I do have other videos on diabetes because if you already have diabetes, you may need more than just these two products, Gymnema and Diaplex. But as always, you can reach out to me for individualized help. If you want to go on a comprehensive health improvement program and work one-on-one -on -one with me, you can uh, email me at questions at drcorey.com or go on my website, drcorey.com, and there's a form on there you can fill out. I also have a low-cost customized supplement recommendation program. You just fill out some paperwork, and I'll make some recommendations individualized to your needs. And if you want, I have a newsletter that I send out every two weeks with information just like this, um, no charge go to my website and sign up for it. I hope this information was helpful and I hope to see you all again very soon with more important health information. And until then, please stay healthy.